What's going on guys? CB Bricks coming at you with another Lego Star Wars video, but before we got into the actual video, I have a major announcement to say. A couple weeks ago, this channel, CB Bricks, hit 100 subscribers. I know, that's just insane. Now, there is no way on planet Earth that I could have gotten to where I am today without you guys, my subscribers, you guys watching this video, you guys liking these videos, and all the credit goes to you guys. If you don't watch my videos, I don't gain popularity. Um, I know I'm making a big deal out of this. It's only 100 subscribers. There's way bigger YouTubers than that, but it's you got to start small, you know, small. It's a stepping stone, and I hope to become larger in popularity with my YouTube channel. I hope to reach out to more people. So without further ado guys, let's get right on to the actual video. All right, now today I've built a mock that's a little bit different than I usually do. What you see here is a Lego Star Wars themed leg, um, pinball machine. Now, <clears throat> I have made a pinball machine before. It's a little bit different than what I usually do because I'm usually boundaries with vehicles. All I do is vehicles, possibly a base or something. But I did something different, you know, 100 subscribers. So, whatever. <laughs> you know, this mock is about 6 inches wide, about a foot long, and about 5.5 inches tall. And it has an estimated um, 300 to 400 bricks. But why do you want to hear me talking, you know? You want to see this thing in action. So let's get right to that. Let's get right on into an in-depth look at this model. So first of all, we're going to do 360 view. See, we got the tray up front. We got the buttons, like I showed in the video. I'm going to show you the mechanism for everything a little bit later. As you can see, you have the stand. I'm going to look at that later, too. You have the big 100. Um, you have two stormtroopers up here. You have a scout trooper and a stormtrooper. Over here you have a mini Star Destroyer, which works really well. Uh, you got a couple of turrets. Um, here you have 100. Back here it has a little arrow. I don't know why. It just happened. Now up here you have a tray that you drop the ball from. It moves. You can have it angled down. But I kind of like it angled like that. Um, same on this side. Same button. As I showed you. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Right here we have some um, detailing along these uh, Technic beams, which have uh, kind of like plates that line them, just kind of kind of make it look like smoother. Now the beams are actually attached to this. Uh, kind of big base, which is just a bunch of, uh, let me get an example here. It's 
just a bunch of, you know, bricks stacked on top of each other. And uh, when you have that, it's just kind of built up. And then you have... Wait. Little tech pieces like this, which the pins attach to. And it's all geometric, so it's all held together very nicely. Um, so that's how it's held together. And it actually works pretty well. So it's, uh, as I showed you, the trays down here. You have the Zemor sphere, which I use. You can use anything. You can use marbles. Uh, but I use this. It kind of looks like a plasma tor or a plasma ball, torpedo. Uh, so let's go a little bit closer. We're gonna get in on to the top. We're gonna take a closer look at either of these things. The turrets are simply they can move up and down and side to side, as I showed you. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of hard because the black background, but. It's attached onto a hinge with those uh, Exoforce droid arm or Exoforce robot arms, hands actually, onto some pins and they move up and down. They're just kind of attached to something like this. Now they're attached to the actual base a little bit differently. I didn't want these to spin, so I just used the two holes that are in the bottom of these and attached them into there. Uh, it's kind of hard to do. Let's get that. There we go. Now we're going to take a little closer look at the Star Destroyer. Oh, it's glory. As you can see, we have a couple of clear uh, circular pieces right here. They're attached in with a half axle, half pin with uh, without the friction. And this actually, I was very surprised by how nice this looked. Without, you know, making it really big, I dropped it. Uh, without making it really big. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out how to build it. Up here on the top, I used a 2x2 two two jumper plate and a 1x1 one one jumper plate that attaches in the middle of that. And the middle of that attaches to the middle of that. So, yeah. And then you have the two uh, studs here to represent the towers and the comp center and stuff. So, yeah. This just looks pretty good for its... Yeah, you know, it's scale. So it just attaches to that pinhole, as you see. Now, um, I already showed you the tray. The tray is just a couple of uh, these texture bricks, which give it a nice, you know. I mean, it's not, it's kind of loose in there, but it just looks nice. And right here we have this style of sideways click hinger brick. And this just goes right in, just like that, all the way in. Now the 100 is just built with bricks. Um, as you can tell right here, I have some rubber bands here, uh, some le official Lego rubber bands attached to some pins. Now what that allows me to do is that, let's say I hit, I hit the ball up here, and it goes sideways, it kind of gives it a nice bounce or a response. So, so if it comes down in this, or wait, hold on. if it comes down this way, it'll either slide off or bounce off. And if it bounces kind of like, kind of like this, it might bounce off sometimes because it's low, but wait, so, as you can see, it just bounced all the way back to the other side. And it's kind of cool. And make sure that it won't get stuck or it won't just roll down. It kind of adds a level of difficulty to it. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Now right here, the uh, actual, I don't know what you call them, uh, banging things are made out of two of... Let me just grab one, two. It's made out of two of these pieces stacked on top of each other through a pin, and they just kind of go wapa wapa. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, and they work nicely. I already showed you. There's some detailing here, used with snot techniques, as you can see, attached like that. Just put that back together. 
just like that. It's pretty nice. Right here, it's kind of just leveled off with some plates. There, you can see it there. You can see the tray here. It's going to be hard to see. It's attached by some bricks, which kind of is attached by a plate, which goes up through here. And But this itself is attached in a completely different way by a couple of um, inverted snot plates with the tray here. And basically what happens is that that hole there just leads right down into this. And since it's already at an angle from the way the stand works, it just automatically goes all the way down. Now we can take an actual look at the stand. Uh, the stand is just a bunch of uh, what do you call it? a bunch of Technic beams set up so where it'll lay on this. I actually meant to change this to a gray one, but whatever. A bunch of Technic beams stuff like that. We have a couple of Technic beams up here, but make sure that this is short in the back so that you know it's angled down. Now, now that we're down here. I can talk. I can show you the uh, what I was talking about before with the uh, the beams on the ends here were actually attached through holes like this and pins to kind of hold it together. So yeah. All right. Now I'm going to show you how the functionality works. I've mentioned a lot of it already, but um, whatever. It's pretty, pretty simple. I mean, I'm going to have to get a better light on this. All right, let's see. All right, that's going to work. All right, so as you can see, the button here is attached through an axle and a hole there. Now, right here, you have a piece. You have like a 90-degree uh, uh, axle holder with the two ends. And basically what it, does, what it does is it hits this beam right here, which is attached to a rubber band so that when it pushes out, it comes right back. Um, but this beam is um, goes through that axle, which is through that hole, which on the other side of that hole is this. So if you move the bottom one, let's see if I can get that. If you move the bottom one, that one moves. So as you can see, when you move that, and it moves that, which works really well. It's very simple because there's not any complicated uh, accordion method, which I've seen. I, I did that on my last one. It's a complicated accordion method, um, which is obviously a lot smoother than this, but this works out pretty nicely. Now, the reason I use a 90-degree one is because if you just use a normal one, uh, I needed the rounded off edge, which is why I used a pin holder like that is because uh, I needed the rounded off edge so that it wouldn't get stuck um, like that. I needed it to go the extra little what, millimeter or so. And I, I had this. I added the extra ones because it had a tendency to turn this way. I mean, it will sometimes turn that way, but not when you're actually playing because the rubber band kind of holds it in place. But sometimes it would turn the other way. So you want to make sure you have something like that to kind of hold it in place. Now here's a closer look at what I've shown you before with the uh with the what do you call it with the tray. And that's pretty much it for the major major details and functions. Now guys, um I think that's all to say about the actual mock, but uh I just want to conclude it, it was really fun to build to do something a little bit different because you know I've been just doing plain old Lego Star Wars vehicles and stuff. And I want to kind of, uh, you know, stray away from that. And I'm not sure, but I think I want to not stray away from Lego Star Wars because it will always be my thing or my main point of emphasis. But I would love to get into the realm of, like, Lego City or Lego Superhero, something else to kind of, you know, so I can reach out to more than just the Lego Star Wars group. But I will always do Lego Star Wars. But uh, as I said already, this mock was really fun. It was challenging to build, but it was awesome. So 
If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. See you later, guys.